So it's been a little while, but I was compelled to make a video about this topic for whatever reason felt I had to. So I am. And uh, basically it's, you know, how do I reconcile my religious upbringing, religious beliefs with my abilities? And I know a lot of mediums or psychics or people with abilities get asked this. Um, and I know it's a pretty controversial topic. Um, people just don't want to discuss. Um, I'll just say it's a little bit ironic. They'll read the Bible and they have no problem, problem reading, you know, Elijah or the other prophets in the Bible, but as soon as someone today says they're a prophet or can speak to heaven, light, source, the other side, God, whatever you want to call it, um, all of a sudden they're, you know, Satan and they're doing the devil's work. So <laughs> that set aside, um, <clears throat> I'll just say, you know, I did grow up going to church every Sunday. We had to go to church. Uh, grew up congregationalist um, under, under the denomination United Church of Christ. Not all congregational churches are UCC, uh, but a lot of them are, uh, at least the United States. So this is gonna be from a Christian perspective, and I know there are many other perspectives, and I think they're all equally valid. Um, as yeah, I discuss, um, it's not so much about a specific religion anymore, but my background is congregationalist. So we went from being Puritans and pilgrims when the family landed in 1640, uh, educated ourselves. The Puritans believed in free public education, so we kind of educated ourselves uh, to be a little bit more progressive. So now uh, Congregationalism, UCC, tends to be one of the more progressive um, mainline Protestant churches, at least in the United States. So I grew up, you know, with a pretty open mind, but um, I remember my first friction um, occurred, uh, I think it was the 1990s, um, the UCC had an effort to be more inclusive, and so they developed uh, a term called open and affirming, which meant that at the time we were welcoming in, you know, LGBT people to the church and even LGBT pastors into the church. And we would do marriages, everything like that. And I remember thinking at the time, oh, geez, you know, this goes against everything I was taught. You know, you know, one man, one woman, the whole, you know, the whole doctrine, what we've always been taught growing up um, <clears throat> until I started, you know, evolving. And over time between, you know, hearing what they said at church, my own experiences, my own learnings, hearing others, especially near death experiences. Um, I've been listening to a bunch of those lately uh, as well. But, uh, you know, just spiritual spiritualism psychic medium classes all that stuff all my experiences uh, i've kind of come to realize that look um we come from the light come from heaven god the source whatever you'd like to call it a soul is energy and so energy inhabits the body that they choose the souls very much pick and choose which lessons they need to learn in this cycle it's all about reincarnation in my view um, they know what they're getting into when they come down and they pick a body to inhabit. You know, they pick the parents, they pick the brothers, the sisters, the family. They, they know what they're getting into when they get down here and they know what the struggles are going to be because there are lessons they need to learn to evolve on the other side. Uh, like a number of mediums have said, who've asked what's heaven like, um, they're shown a college campus or school. So the soul is evolving on the other side to reach the absolute center, the light, God, divine presence, uh, become a higher being, higher energy being. <clears throat> so they know what they're getting into when they come down here. Uh, but they don't have gender. Souls affiliate with a gender once they inhabit a body, and they will affiliate with that gender once they leave the body for a period of time. Um, so your mother is your mother, your father is your father, you know, male, female, you call out to them, you know, 10 years after they've passed, right, mom and dad. Um, they still come through as that gender, but it's energy. It has no gender. Um, so, you know, we talk about people having soulmates, a soul connection. Um, our souls, the innermost part of our souls, does have the memory of when we were, what we've been through before. Um, so we are attracted naturally to some other people. And, you know, male, female, whoever, could be friends, lovers, whatever. 
um, whatever capacity we knew that soul before, we're just reestablishing that relationship again. It's just like we feel naturally drawn to certain people. Uh, it's the souls may have known each other in a previous life. Um, so, I mean, now I've come to, you know, experience, okay, you can't control, we can't control what our soul feels. Um, our souls may be attracted to, you know, someone of the same gender, someone of the opposite gender, you know, whatever, attracted to a pet, certain plants, whatever. Um, <clears throat> we just know the love. <clears throat> we just remember the love from the last time. So um, the whole issue now, I really don't care, you know, about the whole, you know, ONA, wonderful. Jesus was all about welcoming and loving. Um, how many times did he have to say, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself? You know, that is the commandment. Forget everything that was written before. Love thy neighbor as thyself, as they love thyself. And it all takes care of itself. Um, so in my faith, you know, learning the parables, learning Jesus' quotes, reading the Bible, the whole nine yards, um, you know, starting to pick up more specific information or see, trying to see what is behind or what Jesus was implying or getting to when he said these things. So, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself could be clearer. You know, God's kingdom is not of this earth. That's another big one for me. It's like, whatever happens on earth here, whatever we are constructing to interpret God, we cannot, there are no human words to describe heaven, the light, source, God, any of that. Perfect love, perfect peace, perfect harmony. We just don't have the language to describe that. So over the generations, we've read scripture, what people have written before, um, sermons, etc. New England, we had a lot of fiery sermons back in the day. Um, you know, we read all this and then we develop rules. Okay, what does it take to get back to heaven? Well, you need to do X, Y, and Z, or you need to do one, two, and three. That way you'll go back to heaven. Otherwise, you're going to hell. So uh, what I've realized now is that a lot of this is just man-made dogma. You know, there's no rules to get into heaven. You know, when you cross over, when you die, your soul goes back up, unless it's deliberately stuck which case they usually show up to me or another medium for help. Um, <laughs> there's also mediums that consider that part of your soul stays here and the other part splits off and goes back up anyway. It's getting very complicated. But anyway, um, soul goes back up. There's a period of soul or life review. So everything that you've done in this cycle, this lifetime, um, you revisit anyone that you've hurt or injured or you've been hurt or injured or bullied or whatever. Um, you experience everything again over a period of time. You can say time exists over there, which really doesn't, but it takes what it takes. Uh, and you experience what you did to people or if you hurt someone or what, you know, gave pain to someone, murdered someone, whatever, robbed someone, whatever. You experience that as part of your soul's healing process before you can fully go back into the light. And so, you know, Whatever lessons you didn't learn in this life, you may decide to come back in the next life. Okay, I, you know, I was, you know, I was horribly bigoted. Maybe I need to come back as the person who I was bigoted against. You know, different race, different religion, creed, nationality, whatever that is. But the soul is constantly evolving. So a lot of this man-made dogma, I now no longer believe. So when you when I read things like, you know, there are six layers of Amish and 17 layers of Mennonites or, you know, <clears throat> Mormons can't drink alcohol or Catholics can't eat meat on Friday, you know, any of these churches rules that have been set up over the generations, uh, I tend not to believe anymore. But I still do connect with scripture, you know, Christian heritage, I grew up in, in the Christian faith. Um, and, you know, Jesus, Jesus said what we need, what we needed to hear, whether people understand it or realize it, you know, that's their personal soul journey for whatever reason but we're here to help we're here to love and that's basically what it boils down to uh, when i met with a uh, medium i'm working with to help myself open up my barriers communicate better get more information uh, work with my spirit guides more uh, we went through a meditation process and she said okay um so they will tell you everything you need to know so we're meditating 
And um, she said, just ask, just ask. So I asked spirit guides, I said, okay, spirit guides, guardian angels, friends of relatives, whoever, whoever helped me, um, what is it I need to know? Why am I here? What's the purpose? And what I got back pretty quickly in my head, very clearly, love everyone unconditionally. And again, perfect mirror to what Jesus said. We're here to love. We're here to help. We're not here to cause harm, pain, spitefulness, hatefulness, prejudice, any of that. We are here to help, help people and love everyone uh, the same. So <clears throat> uh, I've one of the things I experience regularly now when I meet new people, which in my job, I'm I'm meeting all sorts of people all the time, um, <clears throat> as well as in life. Um, I look at the person, you know, I'm not seeing the skin color. I'm not seeing how their physical appearance is, how they're dressed, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, what's their soul? You know, interact with that person. What is the soul? I can feel the soul. I can sense the soul. I can read the soul. Is this a genuinely good person? Okay, it doesn't matter what they look like. It's what is inside that counts, which is, you know, cliche, but I mean, it's absolutely true. For me, that's what's their soul. Um, am I interacting with a good soul or a soul that is struggling or learning lessons? Anyway, so bottom line is, um, yes, I still go to church, still congregationalist. <laughs> the New Englander in me, you know, loves to brag. It's been 13 generations. You always talk about your family, but um, seeing a lot less of the muck and more of the what is the ultimate purpose. You know, I'm here for the light. I'm here on my mission, my soul's journey. Uh, I'm not here to spread hatred and fear and bigotry and all that other stuff. That is all aside. So any religion that espouses those principles, uh, I don't think they get it. They're misreading and they're false prophets, frankly, in my opinion. So anyway, that's my experience now. So if you agree with that or disagree with that, <laughs> let me know. But um, that's my perspective. And uh See what your perspective is also, but take a deeper look and just know what the true purpose is.